Hi guys, today I just wanted to uh, talk to you a little bit about COVID vaccine and RE and uh, or the impact of COVID vaccine on autoimmune patients. So the past few days, I have been doing a lot of research myself um, since now I'm eligible to get the vaccine. And so finally, it was like, you know, I was nervous. I wanted to get a lot of ton of information to see whether it would be safe or whether it would make sense for me to go and get the uh, the vaccine, considering my RE. And I was, you know, had had some concerns. So based on my research, I wanted to share the findings with you guys. Um, you know, a lot of it, the general information is out there that both um, the Moderna vaccine, the Pfizer's, as well as the Johnson & Johnson's, that they are, you know, uh, they are efficacious. That means they can reduce the incidence of um, corona virus infections in individuals who get the vaccine. And then the safety has also been established and, you know, looked at. But what uh, is really not known is about uh, how much um, uh, or what kind of impact uh, it has on people with autoimmune conditions. And if there are any uh, special things that people need to follow or, or pay attention to if they have an autoimmune disease. So those are the things that I'm going to quickly touch, uh, touch upon. Uh, so let me uh, uh, go through my slides here. So as I was saying, regarding the efficacy of vaccines, both Pfizer and Moderna have shown high efficacy, you know, around 95%, 94%, doesn't matter, both are supposed to be in, both have shown a lot of effectiveness. And, um, and then when you uh, talk about Johnson & Johnson's, I, I would not pay specific um, attention to the percentages there in terms of efficacy because the population was a little bit different. And you know when Johnson & Johnson did the trial, uh, there were also um, these variants that had come into play, you know, the South African variant and the Brazilian variant, et cetera. Therefore, their efficacy was a little bit lower, you know, so, but it's not an apples to apples comparison. Bottom line, all three uh, vaccines have shown that they completely prevented hospitalizations and deaths in clinical trials. So that's a very important um, reason, you know, for uh, all of us to be getting a vaccine because it has shown that it can prevent hospitalizations hospitalization and, and deaths. The other thing uh, is in terms of how long will immunity last. So it, uh, based on data that's available as of now, there is no clear answer to that as to how long the immunity will last, you know, primarily because the vaccines have just been, you know, started to be rolled out and we don't have, you know, data that can uh, tell us that. However, what little is known, we can, we can be sure that the immunity is going to last longer than what will be provided by natural immunity. Natural meaning when you get a COVID infection and then the immunity that results from that, that's supposed to last for around three to four months. But a COVID, getting a COVID vaccine is definitely going to give you a much um, uh, immunity for much longer than that. Uh, and possibly even longer, and the time only time will tell. Safety, most common reactions are injection site, um, you know, reactions, which are common with all vaccines. Then also some fatigue, headache, muscle pain, chills, joint pain, and fever. Now, when we talk about all these, uh, you know, reactions like fatigue, headache, you know, as well as chills and fever, those are all immune reactions. So although they are the side effects that basically tell tells you that the vaccine is actually doing its job because when the vaccine is you know trying to stimulate our immune system to have a response for that virus a viral antigen or protein and which is what it's supposed to do so but these are the most common reactions that have been found and there were no severe um, or serious adverse effects now we come to the crux of the matter here, right? What we are primarily interested in. Were autoimmune disease patients included in the trials? That's number one. Now, in general, for all uh, vaccine trials uh, and a lot of other you know, drug trials to immunocompromised patients, which means patients who have autoimmune disease and who are also taking an, auto, uh, an immunosuppressant medication so that they can you know, limit the flares. So people who are taking immunosuppressants, they are immuno 
immune system is suppressed, right? And those people are in general excluded from vaccine trials because they will not give an accurate um, um, endpoint, you know, in terms of um, efficacy of the vaccine because their immune system is weak to begin with. That's why they are excluded. Now, so that's actually not a great thing for people like us, right, who have autoimmune disease and now we are trying to find out if this vaccine was going to be number one useful to us and number two, is it even safe for us? So one thing we can um, get or what I found out from those studies was that there were some people uh, with autoimmune diseases who were not on an immunosuppressant medication. For example, people with Hashimoto's thyroiditis who, you know, sometimes uh, they don't, they most most of the times they don't need to be on, on an immunosuppressant medication. So they were in the trial and, but the trial results, you know, did not tease out the results of those groups separately. So we don't have more knowledge here in terms of how those particular subgroups fared with respect to the, you know, if, if, uh, efficacy of the vaccine. So that's unfortunate, but, you know, basically we don't have that data there. The other thing, though, the burning question that a lot of people have, you know, I had was the safety of vaccine in autoimmune patients. Now, in general, when people who are immunocompromised, meaning autoimmune plus and immunosuppressant medication, those people um, are considered at high risk for taking live vaccines. And, um, you know, your rheumatologist uh, or your other doctor, whoever is, you know, has given you the immunosuppressant medication, would have told you that, that never take any live vaccine. However, the COVID-19 vaccine is not a live vaccine. So therefore, you know, that risk is not there, that it is not a live, you know, does not have the live coronavirus vaccine. So in from that aspect, it is safe. It's not going to, you know, cause the disease in you just because you're immunocompromised because it's a not a live vaccine. The other thing in general, you know, the American College of Rheumatology, they say that, you know, there can only be other, uh, other uh, sensitivities from a standpoint of vaccine components. Those could be, you know, contraindications. That means if you're allergic to any of the ingredients in the vaccine that you know have, you have known allergies to, that could be um, you know, a factor that would say that you should not be taking the vaccine. But other than that, if you just have an autoimmune disease and you're just taking an immunostimulant, I mean, immunosuppressant medication, then that's not enough reason for you to not take the COVID vaccine. So basically, they are saying that go ahead and take it. Uh, some more digging in, you know, um, I did, did some more digging and tried to see what, you know, in the reports, if there were any information on anything related to autoimmune disease. And uh, what I saw, and um, Dr. Sarah Ballantyne also mentioned this on one of her podcasts, is that there were two incidences of a new autoimmune disease um, coming up uh, 14 days after the second dose of vaccine. And this was seen in Moderna's cl clinical trial. Now, this was seen in a patient who had an autoimmune disease to begin with. And it was, I think, the patient who had Hashimoto's to begin with. So they were included in the trial because they were not on immunosuppressant medication. So, um, so there were two such incidences where a person with a prior autoimmune disease given the vaccine, and then they developed a second autoimmune disease 14 days after the second dose. And this was seen in Moderna's clinical trial. However, having said that, that's a very small percentage of people you know, with developing with that vaccine. I don't know how many total autoimmune disease um, uh, people were, you know, patients were in that all uh, entire clinical trial, which had 30,000 people. So I don't know the end for the autoimmune disease pa patients and then how many, like two incidences happened, but that two was out of how many autoimmune patients that I don't know. However, um, you know, that is, um, uh, you know, that was observed and that could be a concern potentially. Um, then the other thing is, the most important thing is, are they efficacious for us, right? So some safety standpoint looks like it's okay. It's not that serious, or no serious concerns there. But in terms of efficacy, 
people who are, are on immunosuppressant medication, they tend to get a less strong response to the vaccine. You know, that's the reason I said that they are excluded from the vaccine trials because their immune system is weak to begin with. So, uh, you know, when you're on an immunosuppressant, for example, methotrexate is one, rituximab is another one, and there are lots of other immunosuppressant medications. So if you are on one of them, for example, if you are on methotrexate, like I am on methotrexate, then it's possible that your response to the vaccine will not be as good, meaning you may not, your the vaccine may not be as effective in you as it is effective in other people who are not on immunosuppressant medications. And this is based on, you know, um, the results from a study that was done a few years ago or many years ago, where they looked at patients who were taking methotrexate and who were given the flu vaccine. And then they, you know, um, followed these people to see how many of them actually ended up getting the flu, you know, despite taking the flu vaccine. And they were, you know, obviously compared to control population and things like that. But based on that study, it was seen that people who take methotrexate or any other immunosuppressant in general have a lower, um, you know, response to vaccines, meaning they don't uh, really, the vaccines are not very useful to them. So that is a valid concern here for all of us who are on immunosuppressant medication. Uh, and, but the bottom line is, you know, and I talked to my rheumatologist, I also looked at uh, the ACR, the American College of Rheumatology's guidelines, and bottom line, what they say is that even if the efficacy is going to be slightly less than what um, is uh, shown in the rest of the population or the general population, but they still recommend taking the COVID vaccine because in pa autoimmune patients and immunosuppressed patients, if you end up getting the disease, if you end up getting the COVID uh, virus, then that infection could be more deadly and serious for you. And therefore taking a vaccine, even if you know, the efficacy of that is a little bit lower in terms in autoimmune immunosuppressed patients than general population, but still the benefit, you know, that you might uh, be able to avoid hospitalization, that benefit can actually, um, you know, uh, that benefit actually suggests that you take the vaccine, even though the efficacy might be a little bit um, on the lower side. And those immunosuppressant medications include methotrexate, rituximab, or even prednisone. And um, so that that's you know um, what what has been shown that these medications, immunosuppressant, can actually <clears throat> reduce the response. So one of the ways to increase the response to the vaccine is some doctors suggest that you pause your medication, you pause your immunosuppressant medication, for example, methotrexate, which is given in a weekly dose. They say that you pause it uh, for a week after you take your um, vaccination. So the next week you don't, do not take methotrexate, you skip that. So then that way you still give the immune system the chance to um, elicit the proper response to the vaccine. Now, uh, in this case, the, you know, what I recommend is that you talk to your doctor regarding how much you know, of a pause you should do, because there are um, some people who recommend that you avoid the, uh, avoid the methotrexate or the other immunosuppressant drug for two weeks. Some also say that avoid for two weeks before the vaccine and you know, before you take the vaccine and two weeks after you take the vaccine, that would mean like for a period of one month. However, you know, all we all discuss with your doctor and the decision should be made on an individual case, case by case basis, because the doctor will make that decision based upon your individual scenario in terms of how you are doing now. If you are actively, um, you know, going through a flare, currently, then your doctor may just ask you to wait and get the vaccine after you get out of the flare. Also, if you have really severe disease and in your, if in the past, you know, just lowering your 
uh, methotrexate or immunosuppressant do or dose can actually cause you to go into an active flare, then your doctor will again say that, you know, maybe you should not pause it, um, either not pause it at all, or maybe pause it only for a week. Uh, my doctor has recommended to me that I pause it for a week after I uh, take the shot and which is what I'm going to do. But definitely discuss this with your doctor because it's, you know, an um, individual case by case scenario. Again, as I said, the you know, American College of Rheumatology says that one week, um, but you know, some people also say about two weeks. So that's why you need to discuss. Any other situations when the vaccine is, is not recommended for autoimmune patients? Number one, I think I mentioned this before, is when if you are in the middle of an autoimmune flare, if you are really flared up, then um, uh, the recommendation is that you wait until your flare subsides. You can take all methods, you know, do the AIP diet. That's what I would recommend. You know, if you have reintroduced foods now, what I would do is to get out of the flare faster, you know, do an AIP reset, heal your body, do, you know, lifestyle, uh, lifestyle um, strategies like stress reduction, et cetera, to uh, help, uh, you know, tame the immune system and calm the system and get it back to baseline and only then go for the vaccine. And uh, the other important thing is if you've had COVID-19 infection uh, recently, then CDC recommends that you wait for a period of 90 days before um, you get the vaccine. So that's what the CDC recommends. So again, you should talk to your doctor about when, uh, what would be the ideal time for you to take the vaccine if you already um, uh, got an infection from COVID. So this is what I found out from my research. I am scheduled to take my vaccine next week and I will keep you posted on how you do, but good luck and I hope this was useful to you. Thank you. I will place some of the references that I use for this presentation in the description box below. Please discuss with your doctor before you make any health-related decisions.